Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. Gonna walk you through our BC-1000 and some upgrades we've made. This machine's a little over four years old. We bought it brand new into 2018. Uh, this is a gas engine, PSI. I believe it's a 3.0, it's a GM motor. Uh, some of these upgrades are things we did out of personal preference. Some of these things I think were engineering, um, maybe not flaws, but things that could have been improved upon. I know the factory has upgraded some of these items since we bought our machine. But I'm going to walk you through what we've done to kind of make it more functional for our operation. Um, we do run a medium size Kodiak chip truck here and backing this thing up as short as it is on a long truck can be difficult. So from the factory, this tongue has got multiple bolt holes in it and you can kind of see here um, the factory setting, they come at the shortest. We've extended ours back to the second. That allows us to jackknife this truck almost at a 90 degree angle without damaging the hood. Um, secondly, we're in and out of this chip box pretty frequently grabbing a rake, a shovel, or a guy's hopping in there for one reason or another. And so one of the things we did was we added a step and uh, we just welded a piece of steel on top there, put some two-sided tape on there. Um, that makes it safer for the guys getting in and out of the box. It doesn't affect the operation of the machine. Moving on to the main part of the machine, grease, grease, grease. Uh, these things have got to be greased frequently. And we made this custom holder, just some spare round tube steel we had. Um, a quick tip to keep this thing from vibrating all the time so you don't hear it is we actually took a rag and wrapped ours in electrical tape. And you don't hear it vibrating as much when the machine is running. There's already some factory bolt holes there so you don't have to drill into the machine, just find the correct thread count. Uh, moving along to the side here, we added a cone holder. I know some of the European models, you can get this feature. Um, we made ours out of aluminum. We're in Florida, we get a lot of rain, so we're worried about rust. So we just built it out of aluminum, had it powder coated. Um, I wouldn't recommend hauling any more than about four cones in here. We've learned that if you hit a big bump with more than four cones, they're gonna go pop out of there and wind up on the side of the road. Uh, next item we did was these spring-loaded markers. Um, they kind of serve a dual purpose. The spring loader is great because the guys are always walking around the machine. And um, if you use the, they have a plastic tubing style. They don't make it more than about three months and they kind of bend and break off. And these are actually for a snow plow and they've worked really well. Uh, secondly, the driver, uh, because you've got a narrow chipper on a wide body truck. This allows him to see where his machine's at as he's turning before the machine gets turned too tight, which is a great feature as well. Um, the next item we've got here is mud flaps. So these don't come factory, but you can order them. Um, you can see we wore these out on the bottom, so we flipped them one time. Uh, I would say that if I had it to do over again, that I would probably eliminate this piece of steel. Uh, there's a support on the inside and the outside. Um, we've noticed that if you go off road with this machine and, and hit kind of a divot in a field, it tends to grab these and bend. And you can kind of see there's a indention in our fender here. Lastly, on this side of the machine, uh, debris, 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 man. We bought a six inch mattress off of Amazon. And this is just a big foam block and cut this down. And what this has done is it's kept the debris out of the machine in between here where you've got hydraulic hoses and electrical lines and things like that. So if we have to work on the machine, we're not in here for an hour trying to dig debris out and possibly damaging some of the wires that are running in there. Uh, and it makes it much easier on maintenance day to clean this. We just pull the blocks out. We can hose the fine dust out of there. We slap the blocks back in it. Uh, to date, I've not had a rust issue with those blocks holding excessive moisture. And um, as you can see on this one, the extra grease coming out of this bearing winds up on here. Usually we just wipe that excess off. Uh, last thing on this side, maintenance. Um, follow your manual. Uh, we do things a little different than the manual. We're a little bit ahead on scheduled maintenance sometimes. So we chip a lot of hardwoods here. So we do knives every 50 hours. Um, and then you've got O for oil filter, A for air filter. And we just write the intervals on the machine so that no matter what guy's operating this machine throughout the day, he can turn the key on, the hour meter always pops up first, and he can catch really quick if we're close to a scheduled maintenance item. Uh, and then once we're done, we mark out that item and then we know the next one is going to be 50 hours later. Uh, we did our 1200 hour service on this thing today. Moving around to the back, a uh, couple of issues back here. This thing gets banged up quite a bit. Um, this is your, your trip bar light. So if you hit this, the safety switch 
will go off. This will blink to let you know that the infeed roller has stopped. Um, what we've run into is that this bolt loosens up pretty regularly, and so we just tack welded ours directly to the machine. Uh, we feed with a loader pretty regularly. This is our loader. And the guys bump that pretty frequently. Since we've welded it, we've not had any issues with it. Um, internally, there's another one. This one is a plate uh, we noticed was missing a while back. So we just cut a small piece of steel, tack welded that in there. Uh, doesn't affect anything as far as access goes. You can still access uh, the internals from the top. There is a panel up there with a couple of bolts. We just noticed with this panel missing that we were always ha having branches get snagged in there. And the fear was we would have something run up in there, catch a wire and uh, shut the machine off. <laughs> Running around to the other side, same thing. We've got the foam blocks in here. Uh, this side's a little more critical because for those of you who run uh, Vermeer chippers or maybe even just the BC-1000, there's a lot of debris that comes out between here. So this is your in-feed roller motor where all the materials pulled into the machine initially. Uh, as you can see right now, ours is a little bit dirty. Uh, some loose material in here from last week. We've always got small stuff like this in here. Um, these blocks keep it out of this side. We haven't found a great solution for back there. So what we've done is we've taken the factory cover off. We have notched out all the extra material that we could on both sides, including over by the gas gauge or the gas uh, filter cap here. And that allows us to get our hand in there and pull that material out. Uh, plus on this particular design, it's pretty tight if you've got a big hand to get in here and get to this gas cap with the factory cover. So we just cut all the excess material out. Uh, we welded in a, a piece of half pipe to protect our fuel pump, which is on the back side there. So as you can see, your fuel pump wires are right there. So the fear is that a stick would come out of there, snag the fuel pump wires, shut the machine down. And then once we've done the modifications, we just repowder coat it to the factory black, put it back on the machine. And uh, once a quarter when we do detailed maintenance, we jack up the end feed roller using this and your factory jack. Um, four bolts, we pull this off completely and then we really get in there and clean that debris out. Seems to work pretty well. Again, we've got another marker for the driver on this side. Uh, wheel chocks, hugely important if you're loading with a piece of machinery, saves the transmission on your truck. European models do come with these or they are an option overseas. Uh, when we bought this machine, it was not an option on the American models. So we fabricated our own I believe there were some factory bolt holes in there. We just matched those up, powder coated. Um, a trick that I do is uh, usually I've got uh, like a webbing strap, but this is just 550 cord chained to a carabiner. If the guys hit a bump, this thing falls out, it doesn't wind up on the road, kind of saves it. Has happened in the past. Uh, last upgrade or next to last upgrade on this side is our tool carrier or our, um, our rack for our rakes, shovels, brooms, whatever you guys want to carry. Um, extremely handy. I will tell you or caution you that you want to be careful about your length so that your brooms don't wind up too close to the ground or your rakes. Um, we have snapped off handles in the past, so we just made some slight adjustments there. This is just round two. We kind of flared it to hold our rakes in there. If you're going on the highway, obviously DOT is not going to want to see those things on the side of the machine, throw them in the back of the box. Uh, but for residential run around town, these are fantastic. The guys can grab them quick. Uh, plus you can do a quick look to make sure you've got all your tools. <laughs> Again, we powder coated that. Uh, I did use a piece of rubber in here to keep the steel from rubbing together and prematurely rusting. And this one's been on there four years, no rust to date, which is awesome. Uh, from the factory, you don't have a grease guard on this side on the older machines. I believe the newer ones, they've made an adjustment here. Um, what we did is just fabricated some three inch steel here, I believe, welded some brackets and used the factory bolts that kind of lock in this drum bearing. Uh, if you don't have that, when you grease this, it'll sling grease all over the side of the machine. We grease it regularly. We reach in and wipe the access out on our monthly or quarterly maintenance. Keeps things nice and tidy. Uh, last thing that's not an upgrade, but I would mention on regular maintenance is the radiator so on these gas machines if you're not aware they do suck air into the engine bay instead of blowing it out and so if you get a lot of fine particulates like this stuff that's on here it will go through that grate gets into your radiator fins uh, can clog up the radiator cause the machine to overheat so at least once a month we pull those four bolts out two on the bottom two on the top 
this grate pops right out and the radiator is right behind that. Um, and then we just stand here with a water hose and gently wash those fins out until it's clean. No more dirt comes out of there. Keeps the machine in good working order. Uh, last thing we do on our machine is we write down wrench and socket sizes. So on here you can see that we have oil change. Uh, the pan bolt is a 14 millimeter, which is just inside there for loosening up to drain the engine oil. Our chipper knives is something we do regularly as well. You can see over there in the corner, we've got 16 and 24 millimeter. That way I don't have to guess which size socket or wrench I need each time we go to do maintenance on the machine. Feel free to like, subscribe, throw a comment in there if you've got a question. I'll do my best to answer it. Have a great day, tree people.